Oh, la 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 la. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Red banana. Red banana. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tether Radio Podcast. Uh, my name is Daniel, and I'm joined by my brother and co-host, Joseph. Howdy. How's everybody doing? How are you doing, Daniel? Dude, I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic this today. Just fantastic. Fantastico. Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so welcome back, everybody, and uh, today we're going to kick off um, episode nine of the Tether Radio podcast. Uh, this, uh, this episode is chock full of um, plenty of shit to, uh, to address. Of, so. of fun, fun and fancy, yeah. I believe. Fun, fun, fun and fancy. Yeah. Fun and fancy, that's right, that's yeah. right. And, and if my... <clears throat> Excuse me. If my voice sounds a little deeper than normal. Yeah, that, yeah, Joseph. Tell us how your weekend was. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I actually just got back from a, uh, from a bachelor party. I mean, and this is, this, this happens. Um, <laughs> what, a lot bachelor of your, parties? <laughs> well, a lot, a lot of your, <laughs> yeah, a lot of your, yeah, bachelor parties happen, man. That's it. That's the end of the story. Um, so a lot of your buddies get married in your in their twenties, and then you start kind of rounding the bases into your thirties, and then you've got you know you've got the late closers that uh, <laughs> that are that the are late uh, closers, yeah, the late closers. And so anyway, just the the everybody's been out of the out of the party game, the hardcore party game mm. for a little while now. So it was a bunch of uh, a bunch of sailors getting their land legs legs back. So. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, but you know they, they had, the, had the typical bat, you know the uh, typical hallmarks of a successful bachelor party. Um, you know there was uh, a gag ball. There was uh, I, I'm, scantily you know, clad women. Scantily clad women. There and uh, right, and the gag ball was actually for for the bat, the uh, you know the the focus, <laughs> the focus guy, the uh, the big the, daddy, big daddy. That's exactly right. <laughs> And then, and then of course, and then of course we had <laughs> tons of food from Costco because you get older and you realize that there's why watching strippers really whets the appetite. Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you just I tapped my buddy on the shoulder. I was like, "Hey, you mind grabbing one of those Kirkland lights?" <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but that's that was it was an all you can drink Kirkland Light uh, fiasco. Oh my God, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, which by I, I will mention, Kirkland Light does not sponsor us. But if you're looking to sponsor us, just contact us at Tether Radio if, at if gmail. You, <laughs> if you work, if you work for Kirkland, then you'd like to give us a shout. Or if you're just a fan of Kirkland Light, drop us a pleasant <laughs> note. There you go. <laughs> All right, man. Well, um, so we'll go ahead and kick off the episode. Um, and yeah, what you, so what's what's this what's this first this first little uh, this first note that you have on here? Because first of all, well, let me say this. So I think I've I've mentioned this before, but the way that our kind of workflow works at uh, at Tether Radio, our little uh, our little baby group, Tether Radio here. <laughs> um, We'll drop articles uh, into a list, and then we'll review those articles, and then we'll choose what to cover. And so, when I was looking at uh, at this uh, topic, I could have sworn that this this trend had happened before, but I don't know. Tell us it, a little bit it about it. It probably did. And by the way, just to mention uh, something else, if you are listening and you come across something in the news that you would like for us to, I guess, dive into or uh, investigate a little bit more or something, shoot it to us at tetherradio at gmail.com. I can't guarantee you that we will cover the topic, but I mean, we're always down for suggestions and stuff. So, but, um, but anyway, so without all, further ado, all, always a little new news of the weird never hurt anybody. <laughs> yeah, right. So everybody's, uh, it was all the craze somewhat like what, like a year or two ago that the ice bucket challenge and like, 
the uh, I was trying to think of the or just the, just internet challenges. Yeah, have, just these viral a, internet challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so this one just uh, started getting some publicity because people started literally uh, police, in addition to the National Transportation Safety Board, has issued straight up like PSAs telling people, hey, might not be that great of an idea to do this. Quit being an idiot kind of thing. It is known as the Kiki Challenge. So, the Kiki Challenge, just for a little background info, um, the Kiki Challenge basically was, it is, it uses Drake's song, In My Feelings, and somehow it started with this, uh, this comedian. Why is it, why is it named Kiki Challenge? Are you getting into that? So, uh, I think there is some part in the song. I actually didn't look into that because I thought it was kind of weird, uh, well, okay, so I, this will kind of address that. So the first dude that started doing this, that it kind of started, got caught on, or it caught on with this guy, is a comedian by the name of Shiggy. Have you heard of this guy? No. I, I haven't either. I don't know if he's just like an Instagram comedian or what, but I've never heard of him. He's got 1.8 million followers on uh, Instagram. So obviously he's known, <laughs> but anyway, okay. So it, and it was literally this dude doing kind of a goofy dance uh, to the "In My Feelings" song, and but he did have in his little comment on his original post, it right. said "Kiki, do you love me?" And then it said it's like hashtag do the shaggy hashtag In My Feelings. So I don't know. Maybe there's a part in the song where they say that. I don't know. Okay. But, um, but anyway, so it caught on to the point of where other, uh, well, I don't know if you would necessarily refer to, uh, Shiggy as a celebrity, but celebrities started, uh, doing some of this stuff, but they weren't doing like the actual, somehow it evolved into involving, uh, or it, it evolved into involving a car and you, you're basically supposed to get out Got of the car it. while so it's- So I did. I just okay. took a look at this real quick here. Yeah. So What's he, up? so Shiggy interpreted the lyrics, are you riding by pretending to steer a car? So then people started driving cars. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. So, yeah. so anyway, obviously this is a terrible decision to get out of your car while it's still in gear. And especially considering that you've got your phone, you're focused on your phone sitting either on the center console or in like the passenger seat or in some setup so that it's recording through your car kind of thing. Right. Right. And, uh, dude, some of the videos that have come out, like there's, this is one that this girl gets out and these will be, uh, included in the, the show notes, but this girl like tries to get out of her car when it's going like 15. <laughs> so it's like, she just immediately eats shit. You know, I mean, it's like she she didn't even stand a chance. But like, there's videos of like people. Uh, this one lady was doing it, and somebody was filming from outside of her car, and she drops her purse, and literally a dude runs by, grabs her purse, and, and runs off with it. <laughs> and then like there was another one that like the person was dancing and accidentally like tripped or fell down or something. Well, then their car, obviously not being steered by anyone, goes off the road and hits a tree at like, you know, 15, 20 miles an hour kind of thing. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, they it's, will, they will sort themselves out. Well, dude, yeah, and yeah. honestly, anybody that doesn't believe in survival of the fittest and just Darwin's ideology, <laughs> it, like, this is it in work, man. Like, yeah. What's what's amazing to me is that you know people have been doing stupid shit since the the dawn of people and the invention of stupid shit, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just it, now it's just the uh, the mouthpiece is bigger, right? Yeah. The bull the bullhorn is larger. Oh yeah, no, exactly, exactly. But but anyway, it was just it was really funny because I mean, like, dude, literally the the NTSB had the National Transportation Safety Board. Put out a warning and they're like, yo, stop, please don't do this kind of thing. It's, it's incredible, but excuse me. But, man, um, yeah, man hit by a, by car doing 
uh, doing. Oh my god! The Kiki well, challenge. See, see, excuse me, I'm full, my voice. <laughs> this is this is a bachelor. Right? See, see, see. Um, so I thought ghost riding the whip was the same thing. <laughs> Dude, I'm so old. Oh my god! No, so that was the no, no the, yeah, that ghost was the thing when people would like get on you, the windshield. I remember no, that. No, shit. no, that was car surfing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so dude, wait, what's ghost riding? If what you ghost ride, shit? if you ghost ride your whip, you you pop the door open and you and you like walk beside it as it as it drives itself. Well, it doesn't drive itself. Yeah, I was, I was <laughs> like, it just continues to roll. <laughs> yeah, I dude, it's just so fucking dumb. Like, it's, it, it, just it really is. Roll. I man, I want I want that one. I want that struck from the record. You know, it drives <laughs> itself. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, so, so there's there's ghost riding the whip, there's car surfing, there you know there are many many of these things, and I just thought Kiki Challenge, I don't know, I was having a hard time differentiating it. But yeah, yeah. look, man, the internet, these internet, um, God, I'm getting ready. I'm so fucking old. This is unbelievable. I was getting ready <laughs> to say these internet challenges. <laughs> You know, I mean, but I, I saw something when I was, when I was doing a little bit of research on, on this, I saw something, um, where like a kid, there's like a, a boiled water challenge or some shit. And, and this kid, this kid's friend boiled a pot of water and threw it on him when he was asleep on a couch. And so now and he's like, got like second and third degree burns. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. absolutely. Like, I mean, dude. Well, so it, this this is kind of, and we'll we'll, Don't we'll hang cruise out with after. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, there, this kind of w- is also along the same lines as the the cinnamon challenge thing. Did you uh, did you ever see that? This was this is a while back Thank that it was her. like you had to eat a tablespoon of cinnamon, and so. Uh, people were doing this. Well, then people started inhaling it, of course. And I, I actually saw, uh, there, and I don't know if this, I don't think this was like widespread or anything, but like there was at least a few cases of lipoid pneumonia brought on because people inhaled the, uh, the, the cinnamon and basically it, it caused like fluid to be retained in their lungs kind of thing. I mean, dude, it's just, it's, you know, if the cinnamon insane. doesn't get you the lipo pneumonia, will. What did you say? <laughs> yeah. what, was the, what was the word? What? Lipo, lipo, lipoid pneumonia? Lipoid pneumonia. Yeah. yeah. If the cinnamon doesn't get you the lipoid pneumonia, will. Yeah. By God. But, By God. But the thing is, is so all these challenges are going down, but there's some different shit going down in Texas. Okay. So in Texas, <laughs> There was, uh, I pulled this article from the, the Guardian. A shark was abducted in, in a pram, and I actually had to look that shit up, uh, from Texas Aquarium, uh, is, is returned. Shark abducted in pram from Texas Aquarium is returned is the title of the, uh, the article. Uh, I didn't, dude, I actually had to look up, it's, so apparently it's, it stems from perambulatory or something like that. It's like well, shorthand, it's, it's, but it's also British. So. It's all yeah. That's what, that's what I was gonna say. I think if you the if you look all the way back into the into the, uh, the history like of this in my fair lady and all that, <laughs> I think Mary Poppins is gonna be sitting right there. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, so two guys and a woman uh, cruise over to the San Antonio Aquarium, and they actually have footage like cctv footage of these people doing this and they go over to the the tank that it's like an open tank you know <clears throat> where people can I, I which i'm assuming obviously it's probably similar to um when you can like pet the like uh not what are they called manta rays or whatever right at, right. at, at other aquariums but anyway it's just an open uh low low walled um tank kind of thing well so this dude like they wait until there's not that many people around and stuff even though did you watch the video i did like there's i still don't understand how this dude thought he was gonna get away with it because i mean there's still like 10 people around him 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, go ahead, and he go ahead reaches. Ahead well, ahead, anyway, go, so go. he reaches in and he grabs his shark, and everybody's thinking, "Oh, shark, dude, this shark is forty centimeters, or right around sixteen inches in length." So I mean, dude, this thing is not very big. But uh, so he wraps it in a wet towel, and then puts it, proceeds to put it in a baby uh, stroller kind of thing. Well, so he goes out and um, gets the the shark in. Uh, he puts it like in a bucket and um, puts it in in the back of this pickup truck. Uh-huh. And the, uh, the some 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 authority of some type stops them, like all three of them, and starts questioning them. Well, the one dude just hops in his truck and leaves, and leaves the other two people or whatever. <laughs> So <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So they didn't even get out of the parking lot. No, no. The the dude did. The guy made it back to his house. That actually like had had the the, the, the show. You're saying the mastermind escaped. The, the mastermind escaped oh, at the cost yeah. of his two uh, cohorts. Yeah, man. But, but he uh, had his he had his two ball guys just yeah. taking it. <laughs> but anyway, so um, so he gets it back to his house or whatever, and like. They, they were able to like get his plates and run the plates or, or something along those lines and basically found out where he lived. Right. And go over. And this was just kind of strange because they described it as, uh, well, I'll, I'll quote the, um, let's see. I think this was the, yeah, police chief. He said, when we got into the garage and into the house, it looked like almost a mock up of the San Antonio aquarium okay. like like this dude had like extensive like aquarium shit in his house and they think that like instead of stealing it to resell it they think that it literally his he had one previously and it died and he was just stealing that one to replace <laughs> it so <laughs> uh... well you know what man with with fish handling techniques like that yeah, you know, he's like, put, he's like, put it in the fucking bucket. <laughs> well, that, and said so that was the other thing put is the, to put water in the tool. You know what? Put orange juice in a toolbox. <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, what? That was Wait, that was the, what I don't. Under, this is what yeah. I understand though. Saltwater aquariums are insanely expensive, aren't they? Dude, Megan and I looked at getting one because we were we were thinking that we wanted to get. Um, just like a small, you know, maybe like a 10 gallon tank or something like that. Right. Dude, it was going to be like five, six hundred bucks to get like all of the stuff. And, and, uh, it, the maintenance is just like a bitch. And you have to like watch salinity levels and stuff. Cause if it gets too salty, then your fish are going to die. And if it's not salty enough, your fish are going to die. So, yeah. so, so it's, I just think that's really interesting. This guy spent all this time and all this money building this this aquarium. Yeah. I, something something must have snapped in him. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, I know, right? No, he did. He just couldn't. He couldn't back take Clark the shark guy. <laughs> Clark the I'm, shark. I'm guy. not going back to my shark dealer and telling him I lost another one. He was too ashamed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, so uh, really funny video to watch because you're just like. Like, people are, like, looking around, you know, like, did that dude just pull a, you know, fish out of this and just walk away with it? But, uh, but anyway, so the San Antonio Aquarium did release a statement, as I'm sure every listener out there is very, uh, is, is kept on the edge of their seat as to the status of, uh, the shark. Well, the shark's name was Miss Helen, first of all. <laughs> and Miss Helen, uh, is in quarantine right now, resting. She's doing good so far, and we are hopeful she will recover fully from the shock and return to her home she's used to. So but her home, where she could be patted and slapped, yeah, by, slapped by all of the filthy hands of yeah. San Antonians. Good <laughs> God, dude! It's yeah. so that's really gross. So these things. I haven't thought yeah. about uh, I haven't thought about that setup in a long time. 
But it's just like a big open like trough. I mean, dude, with, you, with fish in it, and then you just stick your hand in there and grab them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of these things that like I mean, you know, that people like little kids have to spit in that stuff, you know, well, and like Cheerios probably get dropped in them, and like it just can't, it can't, cannot be good. No, for those, in the those least, in sucker. the least. But uh, but anyway, so I I felt that that was worthy to to cover just because I was like. God, this is, I mean, it was just ridiculous. It was completely ridiculous. And then I just realized that on the video, they misspelled the word thieve. I before E, baby. I before E. But anyway, sorry. But this was The Guardian? Uh, no, no, I think this was just some ra- random... Well, no, I guess it would have to be the end... Uh, no, posted by the San Antonio Aquarium. So, oh my God. apparently they're not spe- sticklers for spelling. They have, but, a low, um, they have a low bar at the San Antonio uh, Aquarium. But anyway, so moving on from that, let's just say that you have some kind of, uh, what, some kind of ailment, or you're just trying to get your head straight kind of thing. Right. Is okay. Well, well, let me, let me just explain briefly where, where, not only where, uh, the kind of rabbit hole that I went down to, to discover this. Mm. So this year, uh, actually 2017 and 2018, there's been a huge, huge um, emergence of meditation apps. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen these things? Is is this just like one of those things that it, like an alarm will go off and it's like, hey, do some deep breathing for a little while? <laughs> yeah. It, is that kind it, of what it, what it the is? The alarm goes off and it's it just like, here's a friendly reminder to chill the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god! No. I hope that it's that alarm, that like default alarm on iPhones, and it's like yeah. wah, wah, wah. That's, that's exactly right. It's like roll a sock up, stick it in your mouth, slap yourself. <laughs> Life's not that bad. Yeah. Um, no. So suck so, it up, Buttercup. <laughs> quit being such a bitch. <laughs> um, so. It was like, uh, like, uh, the one, I'm sorry, I'm super tongue tied right now, which is not good when you're doing a uh, podcast. Um, <laughs> there was, there was one, there was one called, um, uh, Headspace. Um, and then there's another competitor of Headspace. And these, these companies are, are pretty big and they're super popular. A lot, a lot of people use them. Um, and so, yes, you are correct. Um, that it, you set an alarm, you kind of, you know, um, you set, you set an alarm and, uh, and the alarm goes off. It reminds you to, to meditate and, um, and there are different meditations that you can choose from. By the way, just looked it up. Um, Headspace is valued. This is a estimation by Forbes at $250 million, right? And there are m- many apps in this space. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so Heads, is, Headspace is literally just like that type of app, but it's like different. No, 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 no. That's the name of the app. Is that what oh, you're asking? Oh, wow. Yeah. So, he, okay. So this, this is like one app that's, that this the is company app, is valued at that? that's valued at $250 million. Jesus. So this, is, this, wow. this space is huge. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, they're like, you know, they're different, um, kind of like guided meditations that you can go through. Um, there are, you know, just depending on whatever your, not ailment, but whatever your, the issue is that you're trying to, uh, solve with meditation. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I don't use these apps, but, um, I think that I've kind of been coming around to this idea of meditation. Like there's gotta be something to it, you know? And, um, uh, and so I was doing a little bit of research and I found this thing, this kind of new agey, it's, it's not kind of new agey, it's 100% this like <laughs> new, new age thing. Well, it's been re, re, I, I should say it's been repurposed by, you know, folks that are into like crystals and, you know, uh, wind. So like, is this, wind, is this kind of along the same vein as like essential oils kind of stuff? Um, ish. Like, if you've ever been in a, a massage parlor, mm-hmm. parlor, um, that's legit. So they're not playing like Van Halen. Um, 
No, uh, <laughs> this is like it's it's almost it's a, well it, there, these it, it's called uh, solfagio frequencies, right? Mm-hmm. Let me just mm-hmm. come out with it here that these are called solfagio uh, frequencies, and they sound like. Um, yeah, just like mystical frequencies, like something that you would, you would, you know, uh, you would see. Yeah, I mean, that's really the best way to put it, man, is like walking into a, like a massage, uh, parlor or like, a like a, uh, dude, I mean, it really is the soundtrack. So it's, it's like what they would pipe in over a stream of water. A, a yeah, trickling exactly. stream exactly. kind of thing. It's not uncommon to like find these files or whatever, and um, and then have uh, have like you know like thunderstorms in the background or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> crashing waves. Yeah. You know? Um, and so so it, it's it is a the, and this is like a thing the solfagio sulfa- scale. Mm-hmm. So just like a brief uh, brief background on it. So there are different um, different uh, Hertz measurements, right? Mm-hmm. That that supposedly will do different things for uh, for your body. So, for example, um, three ninety six at three hundred ninety six Hertz. You're gonna have to forgive me because some of these uh, <laughs> some of these descriptions are absurd. Yeah. But three ninety six at three ninety six at three hundred ninety six Hertz. Uh, the intent is to is that the, this this frequency will help turn grief into joy and it will help liberate guilt and fear. Okay, that's pretty <laughs> fucking specific. I don't really know how they how they arrived at that, but um, but uh, <laughs> wait, wait. Four, four seventeen. Please move on to four seventeen. <laughs> Four seventeen. The intent of four and seventeen hertz is to undo situations and facilitate change. What undo I mean, situations? So is it like time travel? <laughs> I mean, they're, 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 they're painting with a broad brush. <laughs> yeah, sure. right. Sure. And so I'm not saying that. So okay, let me let me give you a little a little bit more background. All right. So as I was diving into this. Um, I started reading a couple of articles that were talking about um, composers, you know, in the in the uh, hundreds of years ago, composers mm-hmm. using these frequencies in some of their compositions to to elicit a certain emotional response from the the audience, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and so, uh, and, and also I started using some of these just to meditate in the morning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I'm sure there's a massive placebo effect here, right? <laughs> Dude, um, I, now you, you automatically just, you have to tell me what frequency you've honed in on. <laughs> well, if you must know, I'm trying to return spiritual order to awaken intuition. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Um, (laughs) Nice. Uh, And so, and so, I I thought that was really, really, really interesting that um, that it was you know suggested that that there were uh, composers using these some of these frequencies to elicit a certain response. Yeah. So anyway, you get you get down into it, and um, you know. To, just to truncate the story for the sake of time here, um, we'll, and we'll post all this obviously in, in show notes so that you guys can can dive in. But it's it's a pretty cool idea. I, I think that uh, that the that the kind of new ageism, <laughs> man, it's really fouling my sulfigio over here. But, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, it's like some far out shit. Like you can look these up on YouTube. We'll post a couple of videos on YouTube well, that are like nine hour videos of sulfigio, you know, with sulfigio soundtracks. And it's like, you know, yeah, dude, it's like it's like fractal geometry, and you know, you know, like. Uh, um, uh, like galaxies and shit. So it's definitely the the concept is definitely it's very been heady. <laughs> well, it's definitely been repurposed by the uh by you know the new ages. But um, yeah, I mean, I I guess um this guy Guido of a, of Arezio, born in in uh in the 900s, mm-hmm. uh, was a a monk and a music theorist. Um and uh and um. And so, you know, they think that, uh, that this may have kind of come from the, like, the do, re, mi, 
like uh-huh. do re mi fa sol, sol la ti do or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, cause this guy was developing methodologies to, uh, better teach people music. And so when you get, when you kind of go back and look at the, you know, kind of, um, etymology of the words, um, and, and, you know, how the, how this like solfeggio frequency is kind of, you know, wound itself through history, you end up with at this guy who, uh, you know, was putting together, um, yeah, ways for people to learn music akin to the do, re, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, um, you know, recitation, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause do would be back, back, back at the beginning. No, but I think it does end with do. Well, I, or maybe that's just sound of music. <laughs> well, not true. <laughs> but, uh. Well, but it's also, well, anyway, sorry. <laughs> so, this is, this, it's just, it's, it's a, it's an interesting idea. And if anybody out there meditates, give it a shot. I think it's interesting. I'm so, I'm gonna play, uh, around with it. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm definitely, uh, I'm into the idea, but, uh, it's just so cheesy, dude, that well, I've noticed dude, that, but that, the- like, I just don't, I'm not really telling anybody about it <laughs> uh, other than publicly now, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, outing myself. But I'll, I'll also just be like, you know, <laughs> when I get on YouTube and I'm like, oh, let me share this video. And then I like start to type and it's like in my search, <laughs> it's like solfeggio frequencies for like taming anxiety and releasing the inner dragon. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, don't look at this. Uh, yeah. Um, well, dude, but the thing, the funny thing about like, cause like you said, uh, you know, this may be like placebo, but like, dude, that's why. The placebo effect, like, it works. It, I mean, dude, it like, does. there, there, there is a. And certain... I guess it begs the question, does it matter? You know? Yeah, well, and that's gonna... the thing. As long as you're, you know, if it is helpful, then hell yeah, dude. It's like people taking damn, you know, sugar pills in the morning because they think that it, you know, whatever does something, gets them, you know, I don't know. Get some ready for their day or, you know, oh, I take, I take one of these as opposed to drinking coffee or whatever. You know, I mean, it's just, it, even if the, it is just a placebo effect, it's still an effect and it's right. an effect that you're trying to shoot for. So, right. I don't know. Right. But, um, and, and also, also, uh, while I was researching this, I found a cool as hell website, which we'll post, but it's called Skeptoid. Mm hmm. Um, and they've got a podcast and it's badass. Right. So yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's just, it's just, you know, kind of go, it's like a debunking, um, uh, debunking website, a website oh, that, cool. you know, debunks different ideas. And then, and then they do this on the podcast as well. Yeah. So we'll check it's like, out. it's, it's super cool. And, uh, and we'll post that and, you know, give it a shot, man. Solfeggio frequencies. See what you think. Um, you know, and I, I actually think that they have one frequency for taming the inner skeptic. So you might want to start with that. <laughs> you might want to start with that. No, um, I, I was I was just looking through this and I was, it was like transformation and miracles in parentheses DNA repair. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so it's it smoke, it, it does smoke a, a little deep. weed. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like you know, and uh, uh, and uh, and all will be revealed. Uh, but um <laughs> speaking uh my god are you kidding me did you just hear that yeah oh yeah oh yeah i mean so, so got, how I've, did you turn got, 13 today <laughs> i've got not only did i turn 13 but i've got bachelor voice like a mofo this is unbelievable man uh, bachelor party voice but um <laughs> all right so tell me speaking of skeptics Tell me a little bit about Fortnite, and like, let's say I've got a kid, and he's just a real doof. <laughs> he's a real doofus. He's, <laughs> he's a real doofus behind the controller. <laughs> and he's got, yeah, he's just got, he's all thumbs, this kid. <laughs> and uh, maybe that's a good thing. Actually. Yeah, I was going to say, honestly, I feel like that would be a good thing. But <laughs> yeah. anyway, so, uh, yeah. So what, do I I do, this... what do I do with this little bastard? <laughs> yeah, all hope is not lost. Tell that <laughs> little bastard he, too, can have a, a, well, I would say chicken dinner but that's uh PUBG. Anyway, that's PUBG speak. Um anyway, so um I pulled this article and uh it's called Parents Hiring Fortnite Coaches to Improve Play Help Children Level Up. 
I saw that and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. You have got to be fucking joking. Right. right. No, they are not joking. And, um, so, so what, what people have started doing is Fortnite has caught on and I will, uh, go a little bit past this article because I pulled an additional article because I, you just don't hear about companies doing what Epic Games, who is the, um, the developer behind, uh, Fortnite. You don't hear about them doing, uh, things like this. But, uh, that's a little bit different than the Fortnite coaches. So I'll hit that next. But, um, people are literally paying between 10 and $20 per hour, uh-huh. or per hour, so that their child can have a Fortnite coach to increase their win ratio in this game. So I know that we we covered uh, in a couple previous uh, podcasts just like the anomaly that is Fortnite, and uh, it, it it is still just growing at this like insane rate and bringing in so much money that it is just it is uncanny. But literally, people are paying to get coaches for their kids. And, uh, they had this lady that they, they interviewed, uh, in the, the article. And, uh, her kid was like really like, I guess like, uh, up, upset because he couldn't get a win or something. And, um, this is a 12 year old. And so the, uh, the parent got the, this coach to come and like work with him, like, I don't know, like four or five times or something like that. Okay. And, and so now the, the kid, uh, the parent was like, oh yeah, now my, my son's able to bring in like 10 to 20 wins a week or something like that, you know? <laughs> and it's like, I mean, so I just, go ahead, how sorry. long is it, how long is it before we, we just live in the fucking matrix, man? You know? Oh, dude. I, how long I, is it before you just like, do you just, no one unplugs? Dude, like, I would, I would 100% urge people to go read the book, um, Ready Player One. If you don't like the 80s, you're gonna hate it. So, uh, or at least if you don't like history, I guess, then you're gonna hate it. And, uh, but it kind of dives into that, that it's just like, there's this thing in Ready Player One that's called the Oasis, and it's, it's literally where everybody functions kind of thing. Uh It's like you plug in, your your job is in the OA or your job could be in the oasis you know you you have like an avatar you have like there's different like t- <clears throat> excuse me there's different uh I think tiers this, I for, think this this bachelor voice is spreading dude I know right it's it's contagious you, you over can catch uh, it. <laughs> Skype calls yeah but uh but anyway so um So, you know, you can have anything from, like, just a headset to, like, a full, like, haptic feedback, like, suit kind of thing to to have it be more uh, immersive and all that. It really, it's a, it's a good book, in my opinion. It, it is just, like, this dude basically, like, beaten off to the 80s kind of thing the whole time. Like, when was, wait, when, when was it written in the 80s? I don't believe so. I think it was, uh, Really well, they, they just made a uh, they just made a movie out of it, and I'm sure um, it's got, I'm sure it's got a great chill wave soundtrack. Oh, what the the movie or what? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or even even the book. Maybe people when they're reading the book, they should <laughs> they, just think little, that... they should just put a little chill wave on in the background. <laughs> yeah, right. Some Kavinsky. Yeah, but, some, uh, some Kavinsky. That's right. Um, but so, but so uh, real quick, that that yeah. book was written in uh, 2011. So. It's not that old. So, so this, these kids, kids are playing this video game. They're getting coaching to play the video game. Yeah. Right. Um, I think it's, it's pretty fascinating that, I mean, really, I guess really at a base level, that's no different than, you know, getting piano lessons for your kid, I guess. I mean, it, Dude, really? I, well, and that, that's the thing is what, what people are, and I think they're maybe, or maybe slowly, not, maybe, maybe, maybe not even piano lessons, right? Maybe, no. I mean, dude, it's, yeah, it's I guess kind so. of, honestly, I guess. it, it is considered an esport kind of thing. 
Sure. So it's one of these things that, and, and I, people, I'm, and people do it professionally. Yeah. I mean, like, and that's that's what they actually talk about in this uh, in this article a little bit is that the uh, success of like Twitch and YouTube. Um, I think YouTube has streaming now also, but um, I think mo- most people are like hosted on Twitch. But uh, but I mean, dude, these people have like viewers, like millions of viewers and subscribers and stuff and that's what they do for their you know for a living is they they get on whatever talk about different like patch notes and stuff and i mean like i've watched some of and some of these guys are actually like pretty uh pretty entertaining and stuff but but that's that's what they do man and so a lot of people want to try to uh get to that level i guess of because i mean some of these guys and women um, they, they just absolutely, I mean, it's, it's uncanny. I mean, it, it literally is one of those, uh, scenarios of, for instance, um, Michael Jordan shooting like a thousand free throws, you know, at a practice or some shit like that, that it's, you've just done it so much right. that I mean, like it does take talent to do this stuff. So, I mean, I, I, I get it. I, right. I understand it's like, you know. Now, before it shows up on ESPN or on the on Sports Center or anything, I think it's gonna be a hot minute. But uh, well, or or maybe not, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. Egan, well, it's like, sooner. Yeah, it's gonna be here sooner than later. So. Absolutely, e games are huge, crazy. Yeah. Like you know, uh, stadiums sell out for people yeah. to come and watch this stuff. Yeah. Um. But so, yeah. so I also wanted to touch on just the vastness that is Fortnite, okay. because uh, this this will kind of uh, I guess make the the other article make a little more so sense. So give us cause... give us just a quick breakdown of what Fortnite is. Okay, just so, just just briefly here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Fortnite is. Uh, well, the the popular version of Fortnite is called Fortnite Battle Royale. Uh, uh-huh. what, what happens is they, you can either do single player lobbies, you can do like, uh, two player lobbies, or you can do like squad lobbies, I believe, um, which would be more than two players. Um, and so okay. they drop, they drop, for instance, the single player, they drop a hundred people down on, uh, this huge map and you have to run around and scavenge for weapons and stuff cuz they'll have like randomly generated um chests and stuff like that that you can loot to get better weapons and stuff and all of it's uh, supposedly random okay and um and then it's it's a battle royale game so you're fighting everyone it's basically you for you know everyone for themselves and the last person standing wins kind of thing and uh, I mean, literally, that is what it is, man. And so, and, this, and so, is this? Is it violent? Uh, so no, I mean, it's not. It's violent in the sense that you're shooting someone, but it's not like gory, if that makes okay. sense. Okay. But um, but I mean, it's also it's done in a an extremely well, what's in my opinion would be a, approaching like cell shading, uh, cartoony. Um, it's not. It's not like a call of duty or like a battlefield or something like that 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 realism is what their goal is so it's it's a little cartoony a little you know whatever it I, and which is totally for mass appeal kind of thing because at this point this game is literally on if if there's a console out there it's on it cell phones on it ipads on it you know tablets or whatever it, it's it's on all of them so this uh this company, or I'm, I'm sorry, Fortnite, just to, uh, let's see, where was that? Who makes it? Uh, Epic Games um, is, is who actually developed it. Okay. And so uh, they have on, um, I think it's called, or well, it's, it's the official Unreal Engine uh, marketplace, mm-hmm. which the Unreal Engine is like the engine that they use to develop the game. And so... Um, People can use the Unreal Engine and put their products on that marketplace. Well, originally, they, they had a split of, uh, 80, or I'm sorry, 70%, uh, 
of the profits go to the developer, 30% go to, um, or the creator, I'm sorry, and then 70% would go to, like, the the developer, so, like, Epic Games kind of thing. Right. So they have been making so much money that they're like, okay, we want to make sure that these creators stick around, or at least I think that this is why, one of the reasons. And so we're going to, we're going to, uh, up that ratio so that instead of receiving 70%, they're receiving 88%. Okay. Dude, this is a private company. Yeah, but check, check this shit out though. They're also making it retroactive for the past four years. Wow. So, I mean, dude, that's how much the, like, money these guys are pulling in. And the, the, uh. Wow, the last four years. Yeah, dude. So, Tim Sweeney, who, uh, is the founder and CEO of, uh, Epic, he was quoted as saying, uh, thanks to both the marketplace's growth and the success of Fortnite, Epic now conducts a huge volume of digital commerce. The resulting economies of scale enable us to pass the savings along to the Unreal Engine marketplace community while also making a healthy profit for Epic. I mean, dude, these guys are like, it's like they're printing money. Like, it really is. Like, they they are bringing in so much money, man. Well, so so Epic is, I just uh, took a look at this, Um, Tencent, which which is a uh, a big... Asian, isn't it? Yes, owns yeah. forty percent of the company. Yeah, um, and uh, you know the rest is uh, the rest is uh, is owned by you know Epic. But I mean that is yeah. you know that's just crazy. It's a completely Dude, private company. Bloomberg Bloomberg analysts reported that they think that uh, Fortnite is on track to generate two billion dollars. Fortnite, just this game for its parent company. In just the year 28, dude. <laughs> what? Two billion dollars, dude. <laughs> How crazy is that? That is. It's yeah. just, it, I mean, it's one of these things that, like, I, I can't even, I can't even wrap my mind around how this even I remember when this game first came out and they didn't even have the battle royale mode. And it's like it was like this scavenge, like build, building. You and was know, it, was it was it popular then? No, no, it wasn't. And then they they pulled out this uh, battle royale mode, which came a little bit after um, Player Unknown's Battleground, which is also a battle royale uh, game that was really popular. But it, it's kind of in a vein of being uh, more in line with. Um, like Battlefield and Call of Duty and stuff that they want to have like more realistic, uh, right? Um, graphics and stuff like that. So, but um, but man, it's just it's that's, this that's is really wild. Yeah, that's really really wild. Super crazy, man. I can't believe that they are bringing in that much cash. But um, but yeah, dude, it's just it's just an insane insane game and company and uh, to. Believe it or not, I actually think they're, you know, I mean, that's pretty cool for a company to uh, decide to retroactively make something or to make something retroactive in regards to pay, you know, paying backlogs of of cash to these guys, you know, I mean, like that's companies just don't do that shit, you know. Sure. But uh, but I mean, yeah, like they're making they're making money hand over fist, man. So it's like. (laughs) <laughs> it's no skin off our backs. We still get our, you know, yeah, and million I, dollar I, bonus. I think it's, so. I think it's really cool how how flat the ecosystem sounds. Yeah, exactly. You know, so that exactly. you can get in there and make a meaningful contribution. I mean, I don't know, you, you, I mean, I'm sure that some people make a living probably just building other shit. Of course they do. For oh, one hundred percent. Like pro- people probably are able to build some like serious wealth, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. for sure. That's amazing, man. That's yeah. amazing. Cool. Well, let's but, take a let's anyway. take a, a slight uh, a slight little deviation here um, on the on the uh, sports theme. Is, is mm-hmm. I guess uh, guess the way we'll transition here. But um, mm-hmm. so uh, this this article um, 
does the name Urban Meyer mean anything to you? Do you know this name, Daniel? Yes, 100%. All right. So uh, Urban Meyer is a college football coach, for those that don't know. And um, Most of his stint down in Florida, now he's at Ohio State. Ohio State, correct. Yeah. Um, and so there's been a bit of a controversy around Urban Meyer um, lately. Um, there was a situation, I'll just, I'll kind of skin this quickly, but there's a situation, I think in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, um, where, uh, one of Urban Meyer's staff members, and this is like a really bizarre story, but like, it's been convoluted, but as, as far as I could tell, this guy was like out drinking and like picked this chick up and you know brought her home. The problem was he was married and his mm. wife his wife was there and she was like she was pregnant with their first kid or something. And this situation like escalates to the point where this guy Zach Smith mm-hmm. decks this chick he brought home, right? <laughs> I don't know. I like. Okay. I, I covered it. I made a jump there a little. Bit. Yeah, right. But he ends up beating this chick up. Jeez. Cops get, cops get called. Um, and a, a, this domestic, you know, this is domestic violence, and a complaint mm. gets filed, and it's and it's a thing as it should have been. Mm. Um, and so this is in 2015, and now Urban Meyer is being accused of not of knowing about the situation and not you know uh, not doing anything to discipline Zach Smith and mm-hmm. and whatever. But that's not actually what brought me to the article. To to that, that so this is this is like the headline now. But I came into this 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 uh, topic that I want to discuss today on from kind of a, a sidebar, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, the thing, the reason that I, uh, dropped this article in here, um, I'm actually going to shift gears on you, Daniel, slightly, cause I know that yeah. we talked a little bit about this, uh, sure. during the, during the week, but I kind of want to come at it from a different angle. Um, and so, um, so anyway, Urban Meyer doesn't react to this and, um, and so now people are just digging in deep, uh, in Urban Meyer's history, um, and, uh, and just kind of talking about like what kind of guy he is, right? Because, uh, Ohio State is getting pressure to, um, to now, uh, you know, do something to, to Urban Meyer, um, like just can his did, ass kind of thing, or Urban Meyer, maybe even let him go. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's basically the, 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 you know, the kind of center, centerpiece of the of the uh of the controversy but as people started digging up you know about his past um you know uh all of these other things came out right where they were talking about um people different uh, athletes that had played for him in the past and different coaching staff mm-hmm. were talking about his um his level of intensity and just how extreme you know, some of the training was and how extreme Urban Meyer was just like as a, as a coach. And so, um, at first when I wanted to talk about this, I was thinking like, you know, uh, you know, I, I, people don't want to know what's really under the hood to like create these like crazy high performing organizations. Right. Mm -hmm. But then when I started doing some additional research and saw this, um, this crazy domestic, uh, domestic violence situation that he just kind of sidestepped, I started thinking about how unbelievably wild the NCAA is in general. Right. Oh, yeah, dude. I, and so I started doing some research on that. So again, I will, we'll post these articles, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, this was the the hard, the kind of hard turn that I was going to take in this. The NCAA is a massive organization, right? Yeah. And basically does not pay its its employees. If, yeah. if you if you really think about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh and so it's just interesting because it's like and I I love sports just as much as the next person, right? But um, the NCAA, man, is like – it's like a scam. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, the, these kids go to school. 
they get a scholarship or whatever to play. Um, the NCAA, NCAA uh, is is printing jerseys with their name on the, the you know these kids' names on them, selling mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. I, or I shouldn't say the NC the NCAA is not doing this, but the schools are sanctioned yeah. by the, by the yeah. NCAA to, you know to participate at that level. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just it's just really interesting because it's like this Urban Meyer thing. I mean, you know, follow the money for sure. The mm-hmm. the, the program at, at at Ohio State, I'm sure, is as with most large kind of. Uh, you know, uh, large schools that have successful um, football programs. It's probably the most, you know, uh, the 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 largest kind of in- income uh, source generator for, kind of thing. School, yeah, for the yeah. school. I mean, typically college football coaches. Uh, check this out. This was another little stat that came out. Mm-hmm. Typically, college uh, football coaches. It at you know, if there is a state that has a huge football program, which most mm-hmm. do, they're the highest paid government employee. For these states, oh, wow. cool. yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, you know, I, I that's a whole another podcast on, uh, yeah. on yeah. Uh, you know, um, on government employees and, and pay and all that. But it's just crazy. I mean, these programs are massive and they're bloated and they make so much money. And so it's like, you know, um, it just seems like a system that is really, really, really broken. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and, and so to kind of loop this back and then, and then pose a question to you. Mm. So something like this Urban Meyer situation, it's not shocking at all to me. Yeah. Yeah. That this guy would be, you know, a, a total dick to, um, uh, to his, you know, employees or whatever, the people yeah. that he's coaching and the few, and the people on his staff that he would, you know, probably be a, a prick to them also, but would cover up for things that, uh, you know, that would, uh, you know, potentially tarnish his reputation or, you know, harm the program that he's supposed to be heading. Yeah. Right. And I mean, this is like why stuff like Penn State ends up going down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, I, so I, my question is to you, have you, you know, have you ever thought about the NCAA, the NCAA, the way that it works and what, like, just to get kind of face value on this topic. What, mm-hmm. what, are, some, what are some of your thoughts? I mean, it's, it really seems like this situation needs to evolve a little bit, but yeah. And, and I think that, cause I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think that they're kind of walking a fine line because it's like, which they, and bet, oh, sorry, they being, um, NCAA coaches and, uh, specifically football programs. I, I, you, I'm sure that it could be extrapolated out to basically any other sport, you know. I, I'm sure that, uh, or I would just think that me and you could probably, uh, speak a little bit more to football versus any other sport, so. Right. But, uh. By the way, NCAA reports revenues of more than a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And so, they're, they're walking this fine line, though, between, um, being able to pay players kind of thing as opposed to oh we're going to give you this scholarship and then included in the scholarship is this multi-thousand dollar stipend a month you know and like all this stuff so do i mean i don't know i don't i'm i'm kind of uh i feel like they're they're kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place because um man your body is going to take a hell of a beating, you know, in, in uh, a football program, yep. you know? And so it, it's one of these things that I'm kind of like, ah, you know, I mean, they need to be compensated. Cause I, I mean, totally agree with you. You know, well, it's one of those things that like, fuck, dude, you got, you have people like getting concussions all the time and, uh, you have people just like, okay, for instance, um, and I can't remember his, uh, I can't remember his first name, but uh, his last name is Prothrow. He, he played for um, was, Alabama. Um, Tyrone Prothrow. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe. Yeah, I <laughs> but think so. uh, I think so. Dude, dude was like, there's literally no way that he wouldn't go pro. And then he like has this compound fracture of like both you know bones in one of his legs, kind of thing, and never comes back. Kind of thing. Never Where if he back. did, nobody yeah. heard anything about him. And I mean, so dude, in the blink of an eye, 
this dude's entire future, which you know he was banking on that shit, because, I mean, it's not like they're... The vast majority of them are not going to school to become doctors, lawyers, and you, astronauts. You are, you are correct. As a matter so, of fact, Tyrone Prothro just joined uh, a high school coaching staff. Yeah. And so, I mean, dude, I feel terrible as shit for that dude, you know? Because it's like you, you've got these coaches, and this this is kind of circling back around to um, what you were saying, Joseph, about like, okay – all the fans and stuff really want these athletes to be like ass kickers and name takers kind of thing, but they they want them to do it in a certain manner, you know, and they they want them to take their feelings into consideration and they want them to do this, that, and the other. And it's like in this situation, I I look to the fan and I say, hey man, you can't have your cake and eat it too, kind of thing, yeah. you know, because. Yeah. What what comes to mind, and we talked about it a little bit, um, is the movie Whiplash. And if if you haven't seen it, watch it because it's absolutely incredible. It really is because it give, in my opinion, it gives a more uh, accurate depiction of what is given up and sacrificed, and you know all of this stuff to become the very best. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or right. or to for your the utmost of your potential to be realized, right. you know, right. and it's like, dude, it ain't it ain't somebody coming behind you and like patting you on the back and say, hey, we'll get it next time. It's not that shit. It's, it's hey, why did you fail? You, we're gonna work you, you know, until you can't stand, and then I'm gonna let you go to bed, and we're gonna rinse and repeat tomorrow until yeah. you do succeed. You yeah. Know? So yeah. I don't know. I like I like this topic. I like this topic because it's so unbelievably complicated, you know? Mm-hmm. Um and uh I totally agree with you. I mean, it really th- it seems like something in the NCAA needs to change. You know, it was I was chatting with a buddy about this yesterday, and you know, one of the things we were talking about is like, you know, setting up some sort of trust for student athletes and just saying, you know, I'm sure a calculus could be generated um, where you say, okay, you start or you don't start and you play this much amount of time and we print your, we print jerseys or we don't print jerseys with your name on them. And there's like a, a percentage of the, the revenue that the school generates that is in line with uh, with your participation in that program, mm-hmm. and that goes into an account. And if you drop out of school, you get that money. And if you go on to the NFL you, or NBA or whatever, you go pro, you get that money. Or if you so, basically, or once if you you're no longer play, a student exactly, athlete, exactly, exactly. then then and okay, gotcha. I mean, exactly. dude, that that sounds because exactly. then you I don't even think that they. I think realistically, mm-hmm. you know, you could scale it uh, something. Up or down using this site, this kind of concept, and I think people have been have explored this. I actually uh, haven't looked it up, but I'm I'm pretty pretty certain that this has been explored. But you could scale it up or down so that if somebody's playing for Appalachian State, for example, their yeah. account might have you know eight grand in it or whatever, right? Yeah. If somebody's playing for you know the University of Florida or USC or University of Oregon and they're starting and they do four years or whatever. Might have a couple hundred thousand dollars in there. I don't know, but yeah. um, but I'm not, I'm I'm just I, I'm suggesting that I'm suggesting that they run it like a business. It is a yeah. business. Yeah, totally. You know, and uh, and it's and the just, players are the fucking product. And, so and it's the like the product, and you're yeah. not dealing with minors. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like it's not like these people are 14 years old. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, these are adult people that are in this situation. Um, and so this like student athlete thing, I mean, I get it. I totally understand. But man, the incentive from the NCAA, NCAA is not there. And the NCAA is a powerful organization. Yeah. And the, the kind of screwball nature of the, of the whole situation in my mind is what creates these competing, this competing or not even competing, this misaligned agency, right? Mm -hmm. And then you end up in situations or you end up kind of festering these situations, you know, like, like urban Meyer 
you know, being tacit in, in, uh, or, you know, tacitly giving this guy a pass who like beats up some chick that, I mean, it's absurd. It's totally mm-hmm. absurd that this is like, and you know, it's like I was talking to my buddy the other day, yesterday when we were chatting about this. He's like, you look under the hood at any organization or any large organization, uh, large, uh, uh, you know, uh, sports, uh, sports organization at school. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, this is rampant. You would see this everywhere in the NCAA. Yeah. I, be- I absolutely believe that. DUIs covered up or, you know, some like, you know, sexual assault that's sweeped under the carpet, swept under the carpet or whatever. Um, so anyway, it's just, it's just really interesting. And I'd love to double back on this on kind of like, uh, uh, do a deeper dive on the NCAA itself and kind of see some of the research that's, that's happened around, you know, different ways to, to kind of, you know, more appropriately align incentive. Yeah. Well, and, and so this is actually, um, kind of coming back to, to video games. This is why, um, the NCAA football games that used to come out no longer come out. <laughs> they stopped making them because the, uh, collegiate license, licensing, um, or I guess the, the NCAA, NCAA and, uh, the collegiate licensing company, like, it basically ended up in a lawsuit. Because they're like, hey, the players were like, hey, I'm in this damn game and I'm, you're profiting off of it. Where's my cut? Kind of thing. Wait, are you sure they don't release them anymore? I'm, I, well, I just pulled this article and the last one that was released was five years ago. So. Got it. But, uh, Got I'm, it. I'm almost a hundred percent sure that that was a huge factor, if not the only reason kind of thing. Was that it was just like players were like, "Hey man, what what what's up with this? You know, you guys are making millions of dollars off this, and we don't get jack shit, even though you're using my whatever my identity in your game." Yeah, kind of thing. and there's just so. it's just crazy. There's no trickle down. Like it's just, it's crazy. Like think yeah. about ESPN. Yeah. Right, and how much ESPN charges for. You know, to put a Heineken banner on their website or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And think about how much of ESPN is reporting on these like student athletes. Mm-hmm. So it's like without the student athletes, you don't have a system. And so like if these people are adding that are creating that much value, they should be a part of that. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt, they should be a part of that value capture. Yeah, yeah. For and sure, it's right? and like and this like bullshit of like. Okay, well, we're, we're going to give you a scholarship. It's like, screw your scholarship, man. Like, you're, you have artificially inflated tuition to the point where it's just like, abs, it's, it's like, oh my God, it's like, yeah. a, it's like a big ass block of unobtainium <laughs> <laughs> on Pandora, bro. Um, That's awesome. But, but it's, 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 it's just crazy. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the margin on an education is absurd. Yeah. You know, if you like, yeah. if you, you know, look at how much each professor's paid and, you know, how much, you know, you're overpaying the school, like whatever the margin is, it's massive. Yeah. So anyway, I look, yeah. these people should, should absolutely, uh, should absolutely get a piece of the pie. I do believe. Yeah. So speaking of, uh, pieces of the pie, whether they're gotten through, um, whether they're, Le- they're legal or illegal means. <laughs> yeah. T- tell me, tell me a little bit about this, this ransomware. What's going on here? What's well, um, so I pulled this article from Engadget and, um, this is, uh, the, the title was a single ransomware creator made almost six million dollars. So if you're not familiar with ransomware, ransomware, uh, I'm gonna super, uh, dumb it down, I guess, but, Basically, what it, what it does is it locks you out of certain um, stuff in your files in your computer or on some kind of system. And in order to unlock or and and get back to the point to where you can access those files, uh, the writer will say, "Hey, you have to send me X amount of money." Which, which this has know. been happening for a while. This has been happening for a while. Um, yeah, which I, I also pulled this other article because um, this same person, and the reason I say person as opposed to group, because they originally thought it was a, a, a small group of uh, black hat hackers, but um, 
they were actually responsible for uh, shutting down the city government of Atlanta um, in, in March for, I think, a day or two or so, something along those lines because they locked yeah, up their system. Yeah, I definitely remember this. Yeah, definitely dude. Definitely remember and, this. And so it locked up their system so that they couldn't process payments. They couldn't uh, access court information that they needed to get to people. And um, they basically did it for um, $51,000. They requested $51,000 in Bitcoin, which that was really funny to me because all of this has been via Bitcoin, or the vast majority of it has been. Right. And so uh, I actually wanted to get you to chime in, Joseph, in a second uh, after I kind of go through this about um, a company uh, known as Monero. Yes. Okay. So let me let me cruise through this real quick, and then I want to uh, I want to get your take on this. But um, so this uh, this ransomware was identified as uh, it's called the Sam Sam ransomware, mm-hmm. and they were able to figure out um, they were able to figure out there this uh, this UK cybersecurity firm uh, known as Sophos. They were able to find that there were at least 233 victims that paid uh, ransoms, and they basically went anywhere from like a couple hundred bucks all the way up to around fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Well, so at and I think it was a little bit earlier this year they they hadn't really connected as many of the dots together, and so they were thinking, oh well, you know, uh, this per or the people that that made this ransomware. Maybe have pulled in like eight hundred fifty thousand bucks, maybe, and uh, which is still a, an astronomical amount of money, in my opinion, for something like this. And um, and then they realized, oh no, all of this shit is linked. This guy has has pulled in close to six million dollars. This person has pulled in close to six million dollars. Interesting. Well, so. They uh they were talking about how um because with with blockchain and all that stuff I mean the whole concept behind it correct me if I'm wrong is that everything is traceable right um n- no well so but it's just but it's so not traceable to everyone is, right well well the short answer is uh-huh. everything about the, the all of the 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 kind of magic of a distributed ledger mm-hmm. um is also the uh, not shortcoming but is also kind of the achilles heel so you're exact mm-hmm. you're exactly correct like if you if you are in this system um and you are you are you enter into this system completely anonymous mm-hmm. um you can, for the most part, maintain your anonymity, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are uh, products, not even products really, but cryptocurrencies that add additional layers of, of what's known as hashing mm-hmm. to transactions to obfuscate identities, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like they're in the business of creating um, uh, an anonymous you know, digital cash or whatever, truly yeah. anonymous digital cash. Monero is actually one of those companies, right? Um, well, well, and that's that's what they were saying. Or not even is, one of those companies. One of those, one of those, uh, one of those cryptocurrencies. You know, and because and I actually and, and I, I hate to uh, to admit to this, but I actually got down into the comments because sometimes you'll find a gem down in the comments, and that was actually where I. Um, Found Monero. Found, found Monero because somebody somebody had commented, uh, "Wait a second, uh, isn't that um, isn't that the point of Bitcoin? Is that everything's like traceable?" And this guy said, "It is traceable, but there's many ways to take your transactions off the grid, such as moving your bitcoins into Monero and then back again into a separate wallet. Monero has this hidden blockchain, so you can't trace transactions." Like you can with Bitcoin. Yeah. So it's not, it's not that it's, it's not that it's hidden. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just, uh, the settlement layers are, the settlement is abstracted away mm-hmm. from, from the initial transaction. Right. Yeah. So it's like transaction occurs and then there are layers of hashing that happen. Mm-hmm. 
um, to, to, you know, r- randomize or, you know, make that transaction as anonymous as possible. You know? Yeah. Um, but it was but just, it was just kind of crazy. Let me, just del- let me double oh, yeah, back on something real quickly, but you're exactly right. Just for kind of, you know, uh, for, you know, um, just to answer your question head on about are things traceable. So, with with distributed ledgers, that's what they do. Ultimately, blockchains are really good at tracking things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and no know, knowing what is in the system at any given moment and where that thing lives. Mm-hmm. The the um, but they are not necess- Even though Bitcoin was kind of synonymous with uh, with uh, anonymity, mm-hmm. blockchains are not synonymous with anonymity. It just yeah. depends on how you use the data structure. Gotcha. Anyway. Yeah, well, it just, it kind of brought to, uh, to mind that it's like, oh, well, okay, so now there's a way to basically launder Bitcoin. Yeah, but there, but I mean, so sh- sure, but there's always been, you know, as long as we have cash mm-hmm. in any capacity, there, there's always going to be, there, there will always be dark markets and, and, uh, you know, gray markets and black markets. Yeah. Um, and so until we decide to completely eliminate, like, I, I don't know. It's interesting. I like, I don't think that technology necessarily, um, you know, like technology just expedites the things that we do in the real world. Right. Yeah. Um, or at least that's the idea of that's, <laughs> the, that's the idea. Right. Is, is, is instead of, you know, Again, going in and taking physical inventory, if I can just record that number and look at it, you know, on a, uh, in a computer file, then I don't have to go to the warehouse. You know what I mean? Like, this is really obvious, but it's like, that's really all technology is doing is just shortening timelines for things that happen in the real world, right? Yeah. Um, and so my, my point is, is that human behavior, like people wanting, um, you know, a, the ability to, maintain a little bit of anonymity, total anonymity, or have, um, you know, cash that they can, they can, uh, that is not traceable, like different methods of payment, I guess, yeah. for lack of a better yeah. term, um, that, that has just gone to the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I don't, I think it's, cr- it's, it's interesting that we kind of assume that because these things become digital, that now it's like, um, that people will be down for be having everything, you know, the ability to for for the technology facilitating the ability to, to track everything. And it's mm-hmm. just not, that's not that's not it. So anyway, my point is, is that, you know, people will always want to have something that looks and behaves um, similarly to cash. Mm-hmm. And so the, that's, you know, that's what you're seeing, the emergence of uh of those tokens like Monero and things like that. So it's, that's, yeah. that's interesting. So basically, let me just ask you the, this the real quick here. So okay. this cat developed this, mm-hmm. sends this out, um, and, and just lets this program run and then just has like a wallet address that people send sometimes very small amounts of money to and he's accumulated six million dollars, basically. Yeah. I mean, over over I, the I mean, course of like you, it's, five it's years the or four of years, criminality for yeah. sure, without a doubt. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just that just coding, basically. Well, well, and just saying there are six billion people on this earth, right? Like, yeah. how much do you need to actually get from them? Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I mean, dude, there <laughs> there's plenty of people that will uh, readily spread whatever's been sent out. Just out of ignorance, kind of thing. So uh, yeah, dude. You know, yeah, so yeah, I, without a doubt. So so, did Atlanta pay the 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 ransom? Uh, that is actually a really good question, man. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. I don't think they actually. I don't think so. They they didn't really have anything about them paying it. They just said that they had demanded fifty one thousand dollars. So right. I don't know how they got it worked out. But I mean, I would think that also probably if they did pay it, they're not gonna make that super uh, <laughs> super public, <laughs> you right. know? Right, right, right. Because right. it's right. like, oh god, you know, there's somebody out there that has something on the government of Atlanta. 
you know? Right. It's like, right. geez. But, um, but anyway, so, um, so man, this has got me that entire conversation. I feel like I need, I need to go out and, and, uh, get a vape pen, dude. It may kind of made me nervous. Yeah. Right. And you take the edge off. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so what's, what's going on with my, with the, my flavor options? <laughs> yeah. Well, so basically, uh, lawmakers are trying to regulate e-cigarette flavors. Okay. That is the, the, the title to this uh, article I pulled. And I'm, I do have to say I'm kind of surprised that this isn't getting more traction because um, – so back in 2009, uh-huh. the, the FDA actually banned all flavors um, except for menthol in combustible cigarettes. Did you know that? No. I mean I knew that there was just menthol or a regular cigarette. But I didn't realize, and but it but it also makes sense. Wait, in um, it, wait. You, so you're saying for like the the one uses, the 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 disposable ones. It's it's literally described as combustible cigarette. Interesting. Okay. But the thing is, is they didn't apparently they didn't have to do that with cigars. Okay. Because I mean, hell, Swisher Sweets are still out there in an array of tropical flavors. <laughs> right. I'm a mango and, man myself. Yeah. Right. But uh, but anyway, so with the with all the vaping stuff that's uh, that's going down, not only is there not enough, um, there's not enough studies and there's not enough uh, data at this point to really come to a conclusion as to it, whether or not vaping is bad for you. We know the effects of nicotine on your body and it's not good. Um, or, or at least it, over the course of, uh, time, you know, I, I, I believe it's, um, it's, it, it can like harden, uh, uh, vessels in your body and stuff Ni- and basically ni- make nicotine. Nicotine. Correct. Okay. okay. And so, um, so I mean, it's, it's not a good thing. Yeah. I'm sure that it makes you feel good and all that jazz, but I mean, your, your body was not made to, be getting dosed on nicotine every 15 to 20 minutes. So. Right, right. But uh, but the thing that they're really worried about is uh, the fact that kids are being drawn to vaping, you know, because, I mean, shit, dude, when you have a pina, pina, pina colada flavored uh, vape juice or whatever, right, right. Or, or like whatever, fruit punch or, you know, all this stuff that is completely appealing, you know, flavors that are appealing to children um and then it's like oh well it's cool to vape you know all this jazz um so they're they're basically wanting to crack down and be like basically institute something similar to um not being able to to market flavors and stuff that would be desirable to to children right because right. I, I mean like I'm I'm really interested to see where all this vaping stuff goes because I just don't I mean your your lungs were made for to to have like a certain small number of gases in them <laughs> and I don't think uh Peter Not if you're vape clouds, juice. Bro. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but uh have you seen some of the like vape videos and stuff that it's just like I these mean, fools yes that'll go through like like multiple cartridges in a matter of like 10 minutes kind of thing well, or something and they, like that. And they've got, they've got like some sweet mods, you know? Yeah. The, yeah. The, oh, you sub oming. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Have you ever heard of sub oming? It's literally a vape term so that you're <laughs> reducing the resistance in the, in the vape pen so that it like you can get more vape. Sub oming. Oh, no, yeah. but I know what my next customized <laughs> license plate is going to say on it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Sub omer. For sure. Sub omer, yeah. And then I'm going to have uh, stickers that are like, chase this cloud. And it's just going to be like, it's going to be like, you know, a guy big. exhaling like a big middle finger, you know? I, I'm going to, I'm going to have one that says, chase this cloud. That's me bending over. <laughs> that's good. I think that's right. classy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna be right beside my uh, Calvin sticker that he's pissing on a Chevy uh, emblem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, dude. Well, no. well, look, I just so there are cloud competitions 
at, at and one was at Vapor Dynasty Expo mm. 2015. There you go, 6. dude. Six point one million uh, views. I mean, it's it's ridiculous, but uh, but anyway, to to get back to the article, I mean, there does need to be some kind of regulation in this because even though it may not be as bad may not be as bad as like a straight up cigarette Uh uh-huh it's still it's still shit that you shouldn't be putting in your body kind of thing and and so i mean like dude and kids are stupid they just are you know i mean that's that's how most smokers that smoke these days started you know is because they shared a cigarette or whatever on like their parents' back porch or whatever when, when they were, you know, upstairs asleep and they smuggled a fucking menthol from, like, their mom or something, you know? It's like... Yeah, 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 but it's... it's I So I agree with most of what you said. I will push mm. back a little bit that, like, I don't want to live in a nanny state, you know? Oh, and, and I think that I, we, I, we all, yeah. everything, is, everything is regged and is regged so heavily. Uh-oh. You know, um, but I'm with you. I mean, it's like <laughs> if you're not a child, but, but you're buying like, you know, Fruit Loop uh, <laughs> vape cartridges, yeah. like, you, I don't know what the fuck's up with you, man. Like you got, I think we, you need to have a deeper conversation, you know? Um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's just, it, it was one of these things that um, it's it's going to be really neat to watch how this this whole microcosm evolves because dude it, I'm waiting for for like studies to come out that it's like definitive oh you know we watch these people vape for 5 years or whatever and now all of them but like two have you know pancreatic cancer or something sure sure it's probably not going to be lung cancer but uh. sure something something just that's just really bizarre and un yeah and, i mean there was a time when doctors would prescribe cigarettes oh yeah oh yeah well, so, shit, dude. There was there was a time where doctors prescribed like amphetamines and stuff and cocaine because you were you were tired. Well, they still <laughs> they still prescribe amphetamines. Well, but I'm saying because you were tired, you know, it's like diet pills, dude. <laughs> diet pills. Hey, and if we really want to reach all the way back, there was a time when you were too lusty. The doctor would bleed you. <laughs> Yeah, right. Let let your there's bad a, humors a time, out through yeah, your feet. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. There's a time when your humors were imbalanced, right? Yeah. You were just a wee bit lusty. They needed, yeah. to, they needed to... A wee bleed. bit lusty. Nice. Oh, man. But, um, well, look, I think we're coming up uh, coming up on our time. Um, this has been a heck of an episode. Definitely, Word. definitely have dug it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin through a couple of notes here just real quickly. Um, so you've been listening to Tether Radio, and I want to remind you that uh, if you'd like to drop us a note, um, we would love to hear from uh, from any folks out there in uh, in the big the big bad world. Tether Radio, T E T H E R R A D I O, Tether Radio at Gmail dot com. You can find us at, on Twitter at Tether underscore Radio. The handle on Instagram is at Tether underscore radio also. Uh, And on Facebook, we are uh, Tether Radio, all one word. Um, So this has been episode nine of Tether Radio. Uh, I'm Joseph, and uh, you've been uh, listening with uh, the the other voice that sounds exactly like me. (laughs) I'm Daniel, and I'm here weekly. (laughs) And this has been another episode of Tether Radio. So Joseph and Daniel reminding you to stay tethered friendos, and we will see you next week. See you guys next week.